Mitch, this is a search and rescue mission. Charlie, Micah, and Grantham are all lost on their own ranch. You have a couple days to find them. What all do you have on you? upon the air. It must be Charlie's vape. He's this way. So recently we dropped a video with Mitch talking about sustaining yourself when you go out into the woods, but that's not always the exact scenario if you're actually going out into the wilderness. So Mitch, if you were to go into a search and rescue scenario and you're looking for someone, what would you take? Well, first it's important to know the individual that you're trying to find. Uh, do they have knowledge of the area? Where do they go on a regular basis? It's kind of like tracking an animal, same sort of thing. But humans are smart. So if they want you to find them, which is great, uh, they might also have a radio. And you can actually use a radio and just talk to them. So having communication with them is great. Um, whether it's to get them closer to you or to get you closer to them, uh, I always want to be able to talk and communicate. One, where I am, where I'm going, and when I should be there both with the person that I'm trying to find and with other higher recovery assets, whether it be like a helicopter or anything else like that, say we have to air evac somebody out of an area. I wanna be able to talk to that helicopter and tell them exactly where I am, where they need to land to pick them up, uh, and then a way of signaling them to get them there. So what you're saying is rule number one is you don't wanna to have to become another patient that needs to be yeah. rescued as well. Yeah, it, step number one, be an asset, not a liability bring enough to make yourself self-sustaining, and then you can help other people. You can't help anybody if you can't help yourself. So know, have a plan, bring stuff to take care of yourself, and them should bad things have happened. Makes sense. Yeah. So with that, uh, there's a lot of tech out there nowadays. I always like having a map and compass just because it's back to the roots. If all else fail fails and the worst is happening, I can still grab a map and a compass and I can still utilize that information and skill that I've learned over the years to find somebody or find my way to an area. Uh, but technology has become pretty awesome where I can have my phone with map systems already programmed into it, GPS signals in there, then also having it plugged into other comm systems and networks to actually like pinpoint directions as to where I am draw a, pow a path of travel that I want to be taking and have that instantly communicated over to higher headquarters that's observing a rescue effort. It'll track all the other SAR assets in the area that are also trying to find them and we can all communicate to each other using text messages and pictures and everything else like that. Say they find like a piece of evidence of an individual that they were here as by a certain time frame or whatever. There, there's a lot of different things that modern tech can bring you. So I, I try to have some of those assets as well uh, in order to stay up to date faster than just going off of a radio and trying to translate things. Sure. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that I keep on there. Um, so that's just attached to the pack as it is. Um, one of the other things is if the person that I'm trying to find also has a radio, um, but say they're injured, they can't get to a good location, or they don't know exactly where it is that they are, I want to be able to find them if they can't communicate to me where they are. So I would bring with me uh, this kind of ghetto rigged Yagi antenna that I've got um, and patch it into uh, this SDR stick. Yeah, uh, set up so that I could have it plugged into my phone and then the other end plugged into the antenna. And uh, Yegi antennas for any guys who aren't familiar with comm setups is a directional antenna. So with this, it picks up the signals of radio frequencies the strongest when it's pointing directly at the signal. So I just took like a 3D printed Glock handle uh, so I can point it like a pistol 
and I can hold it in the direction that I'm trying to find it. And then my phone will tell me where the radio frequencies are the strongest. So I know like, hey, if I'm listening to him on that same channel, while I'm direction finding him, I can be pretty certain he's in that direction. And then I can just pack it up, put it back in my bag and keep walking over and try to find him. If I can't find him right away, I might circumnavigate around the area to different locations around where I think they are and then use the compass with all of that information in order to triangulate where he should be. <laughs> yeah. And that's a whole lot of land nav and like radio frequency nerdum that's all combined together in order to like help you find people uh, in a situation that are using radios and all that sort of stuff. So that that's just one of the setups. And that's a $9,000 device? <laughs> no. So all this is aluminum and I got it on Amazon for like 25, 30 bucks. Uh, it's camo form, which is like a cheap roll of camouflage tape. Uh, I just use it for the texture so it doesn't grab onto everything. And then like that I 3D printed the grip at the house. You can you literally just tie a stick to it as well. It's sure. not important. Someone in the comment section is gonna be like, who did your stippling, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be uh, myself with a wood burning kit yeah, in nice. my garage getting, I don't know, slightly fumed out in the garage. How this functions is a whole video in and of itself. Oh yeah, like there's guys that are way smarter than me on radios because it's a lot of math and wizardry that goes into radios and communication. I am not a comms guy. I can use the tool. I do not understand the black wizard magic that goes into it. I know guys that can talk to the other side of the planet by bouncing signals off of like portions of the atmosphere. I'm not that guy. So I am not a, a comms nerd by any means, but I can use some of the tools and some of the theories in order to have it be viable, cool. right? Um, so that's, that's just one of the tools that I would want to have with me there. And these SDR sticks, they're, they're relatively new. Um, it was by Terminal Armament. Armament. Uh, I think he changed his name now. Yeah, I forget like what he changed it to. Something. Well, that's not a guy's actual name. I think he changed the company's name of Terminal Armament. I forget what it is. We'll throw it on the You'll screen. Um, but that's one of his setups. It runs two digital uh, radio setups in it at the same time. So one SDR uh, module can be listening to the radio frequency. The other one can be finding the strength at the same time on the same device. Wow. So it's, it's a pretty cool tool uh, to be utilized, especially if you're a civilian or ngo and don't want to spend a shit ton of money for like a wave relay setup to do mesh nodes and everything else like that and you just need to utilize it in a different fashion uh another thing would be signaling capabilities should i find them and i need to get somebody's attention to where we are i'd want to have like an sv9 panel and it's just a hyper reflective piece of material i can pull out and undo all of the knots because it got tangled up on me. And I can tie this up inside of a tree or have it strung across an open field, but it's reflective and waterproof enough in order to draw the attention of uh, anything that might be trying to find us and help us get out of that situation really quickly. So I try to have that uh, easily accessible and an outside compartment on my body as well. Um, other things, binoculars, notepads, writing utensils. Oh, what, you're not just searching through an LPVO? No, <laughs> no. Why would I need a rifle if I'm just trying to help somebody get off a mountain? Right? Exactly. Like this is a chest rig made for carrying rifle mags. I don't have a single rifle mag on me. I have a pistol mag on me just in case, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't need to be going out with a giant rifle set up mm -hmm. all the time. Right. So I would have those um, extra cordage, bungee setups, things like that. Lens cleaner for all the other lenses, a range finder because guessing is a pain in the butt. It's nice to actually laser something and know exactly how far away it is uh, so you can communicate accurately. Plus, it also will help when you're triangulating uh, movements and locations and everything else like that. 
Then the top section here, just try to permanently have attached in there at all, all times a signal mirror, uh, which I can utilize to mark anything in the sky. So as long as I have the sun available to me, I can create a reflection and start blinding anybody. Oh yeah, yeah, you just got me. Got him. Here, do it again for the B-roll. Yeah, I'm dead. So let's say you are actually out there and you're trying to rescue a buddy. Keep in mind the fact that life lights and getting all these people together to find someone or something can be really expensive. And as the American dollar continues to decline, you're going to need to get your finances in order. And a good way to do that is to go to Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold is a company that has phenomenal ratings with the Better Business Bureau and all the other companies out there that actually rate and qualify how good of a brand this company is. And Allegiance Gold is one that we trust and you should too. So go ahead and go to protectwithdc.com. Make sure you get your finances in order. So these are pretty cool. They have instructions on how to use them in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't like to read instructions, but you can be very, very accurate with these. And they, they're a line of sight. So as long as you can see it, you can hit it with one of these. Um, so they, I try to keep one of those with me as well inside of there. But that, that's all that's in the tress rig. That's what I want to have on my front torso ready to go, as well as a, a map and a compass in there as well. Uh, just in case. All right, uh, one of the other things is strobes. So Hellstar makes some really cool strobes. They're made for the military for jumpers and other signaling aircraft and ISR assets and everything else like that. Most of us don't need it. They make cheap airsoft ones that are pretty awesome. Uh, these little night stars, uh, I think that's what they are. Nightcore, Night there it is. Uh, I just got it on Amazon and it's uh, USB rechargeable. It does white, blue, green, red, and IR. Sheesh. So nice. it, it does all of the things and I can charge it with all my other charging setups and everything else like that. And, and it can just clip onto my back. So if I'm traveling around and I know they're coming to find me and I want to find them, I can turn it on, keep walking, and it will still be transmitting that signal throughout the entire process too. Very cool. Yep. Uh, as far as radios, again, just having something there to communicate to uh, higher up uh, authorities so that they know what's going on with the situation, keep in contact, say they found something and now I don't need to be looking anymore. Or they can change, hey, there might be something over in this area, can you go check it out? Uh, communication is important when you're trying to find people as well. So having a good radio setup. Uh, water, always important. Hydrate or die. So always bring extra water. And then getting into the pack. This is not nearly as a robust system as my previous pack, but I still want to have things like a map and compass. So there's the compass. Um, I might not have all of the 550 cord, but if I need to do something, I might bring just a spool of Kevlar thread with me, which I can still sew with. I can still tie things together and it will do a lot of work in a very, very small package. So I, I take that with me as well. Something to write on, write with, extra electrolytes, either for me and or for the person that we're trying to find. And then trash bags are phenomenal, not just for trash, but if I didn't want to bring like a camo platform for pack cover, like for my bag, I can just take one of these, open it up and use this as an improvised pack cover for my entire pack. Say if I need to keep it dry or I need to cross a river or anything else like that, uh, tying it up, it'll completely watertight seal up my bag system, add a little bit of air pressure into it for buoyancy. Uh, and I don't have to worry about it. And it packs down smaller than most um, pack covers do. Yeah. So trash bags are great, both for your wet gear so not everything else in your bag gets wet, uh, but also for your pack itself. So I, I try to keep at least two with me so I can keep my clothes separate as I'm going through and then also help out with other things as we're going. Um, same sort of bungee system, try to keep your gear off the ground and situated and safe just to stay clean. So try to keep those. Um, 
I might not want to have my big axe on here, but sometimes like a little hatchet or tomahawk is really nice to have. Axes are really good for chopping things just because of the shape of the blade. So I might go for a smaller hatchet or tomahawk in that case. But if I didn't want to do that, I would at least want to have a good bushcraft knife, something that's big, hardy, chonky, good for chopping, uh, but also good for fine work as well. Because the blade on that one's decent, but I can split a larger piece of wood with this blade as opposed to that hatchet. So that guy will go with me. And then when we get into the bag. And the bag itself is? Uh... This is a Mystery Ranch 3-Day Assault, I okay. think. It's the, the tri-zip setup that they have. Um, they're pretty, guys. I like how the back system uh, adjusts to my frame size. Uh, and then it Velcros into place. Um, I've even used it for like tornado relief efforts. Uh, where they didn't have powers or roads for us to go through, I would just take my chainsaw and put the chainsaw blade right here and then the main motor part of it up top and I would hike in a chainsaw to start taking out wow. trees and clear roads and That's stuff awesome. like that too. So I, I really like them. They're a good setup for a lot of different things and a lot of different reasons. Um, and they do well in a lot of them. Uh, so still also have the, uh, the dry bag with emergency clothes, keep dry kit like we talked about before. You guys already saw that. Uh, and then again, line kits if needed or thought that there might be more injuries, it's good to have materials to uh, improvise sleds, improvise stretchers, sling somebody up, swat them, do all the improvised medicine uh, because this might run out. And just in case someone doesn't pick this up on one of the other videos, you've got these daisy chained. Yeah. So daisy chaining is a, a way of doing a continuous slip knot together to prevent knots from forming inside of the quarter that you're trying to store. Uh, and the way that works is once everything's put together, I can undo this one end. You have to do it from the correct end, otherwise it never works properly the first time. And... Nope, that's the wrong end. See? You had to be able to tell it. But if I grab, I just pull, the entire thing undoes itself without knots or tangles inside of it. And then I can hang that on a tree or on my pack and grab one line at a time and just go to work with it. I don't have to worry about, oh, it's a tangled mess. Wow. Especially when you're trying to improvise and make something to transport somebody. You want to have everything nice and organized and efficient, not wasting the time. Be effective, yeah. right? So that's, that's what we're looking at there. Uh, to, do, to tie that daisy chain, try to make sure that all of your lines are the same length when you start. And you do an overhand loop, come through, grab the trail end, pull a bite through. Go through it again, grab a bite, pull it through. And you just keep that process going continuously all the way until you run out of line. Boy Scouts. You didn't even do that. The I'm saying Scouts. Boy Scouts for, for adults. It, like, yeah. A lot of the, the stuff that people are talking about for survival and things like that, it's all the stuff that was common knowledge and required in like the 1800s to not be dead. Yeah. And we just lost it with creature comforts and being comfortable all the time. So they, it's nothing fancy. It's literally common sense that is no longer common. Yep. So that's, once it comes to the end, pull it all the way through, cinch it down tight, and then there's a tangle-free set of cordage that's in there ready to go. Uh, if it's gonna be like a multi-day search thing, which I've had to before, and like they've allowed us to stay overnight because of some of the stuff that we were doing to continue the search and rescue efforts, I do wanna still bring recharging capabilities. I don't know how long it might take. So I still wanna be able to charge up all my devices to stay in contact with everybody throughout the entire time. So still solar panels, battery banks, things of that nature to stay in contact, keep it all charged up and effective. Hey guys, when it comes to search and rescue and finding individuals in order to help them, thermal optics, whether it's uh, handheld or weapons mounted is an incredible tool. 
Now this PARD Optic also has a rangefinder built into it as well as a ballistic calculator. Down the road in more content, we'll get into some of the details, but we do have to thank PARD for sponsoring this video. And I do want to show you guys how... Run! Uh, for my sleep system during this time, it's a little bit smaller and more rugged as compared to the last system. I still want a barrier to keep me off the ground. This is again, one of those Red Fox guys, but it's the same thermal air pad that you unpack, blow up, and it has cushion and keeps that dead air space underneath you. Same thing, different design. That's the exact same process though. Uh, the other things I do is I bring a hammock. Uh, between a hammock and a poncho and line kit, I can create a sleep system right there that will keep me off the ground, keep me insulated, and uh, without having to worry about getting too cold, even if it's snowing outside. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot that can be done with just that stuff right there. Um, as far as like emergency water stuff again, oh, there's my knife. Uh, this is another bivy sack that has mylar built into it. Nice. Mm. So if they're really off in a bad way, I can have a mylar blanket bivy bag with sterno cans to heat them up, to keep their body heat going. And it's really, really small and compact. And then I can also utilize all that once they're getting warmed up, take care of them and then potentially move them afterwards. Cause there's more than just locating someone. No, you have to get them out, right? right? Search and rescue, the, you can search for them. Once you find them, you have to do the last part right. and actually get them out. Um, it, with the knives, you can do different setups. Like the big knives are good for going through larger things. It's good for chopping. Uh, and then you can do smaller knives like these little uh, SE Rat 4s or the Ronin series that they have. Um, they do really well, they're durable. They have like a lifetime warranty. If I threw this or chopped it in half with any cutting tool, they would just replace it for me, which is nice of them. Awesome. Um, but having those as well as a smaller tool and a way of starting a fire together that I would probably just live on my belt the entire time and not come off. And then also inside, come on, have a little ceramic sharpening stone so I can polish up the edges of my finer cutting tools, make them more effective. I don't need necessarily a giant wet stone in this case, right? There's not a lot to move. So that, that would be, the cutting tools there. And then for warming, additionally to having that emergency kit, I also want to take care of myself. So I bring like a little drug rug with me uh, from like Mexican wool setup. And that is still really warm, regardless of how cold it gets, how wet it gets. Wool has some amazing thermal insulative properties where even if it becomes soaking wet, it will actually still retain, I forget the percentage, but it's stupid, amount of its insulative properties. It will not suck the buddy heat away from you and it'll actually still keep you warm. And if it gets wet and you're hot, it'll help create a swamp cooling effect. So wool is by far like the most underrated material for a lot of this stuff. It is what uh, heavy, it is bulky, but it's absolutely phenomenal for the majority of these situations. Uh, further on with the water stuff, again, little boo-boo kits, things for myself and cleaning further water if I need to, to get those things set up. Those things are great. And then anytime I'm using a knife because I don't want to become a liability, I will wear gloves, uh, either something with good leather palms on it or something that gives me really good grip uh, to make sure that I'm not going to slice my hand open when I'm actually trying to use it and help somebody. Makes sense. So th this covers the amount of protecting myself, my body, all of the things that I have, treating myself and anybody else, signaling for a recovery force to find me or talk to them to help them find the person, and then also sustaining myself through the sustenance that I have and can procure. Uh, if I become to a certain point where I didn't bring enough sacks or whatever, then I can go, hey, I need you to like drop some off real quick in the search helicopter, which is always fun to do to like vector them and they throw a jar of peanut butter at you. <laughs> uh, it's, 
it's something that you can be done. It has been done in the past. You don't necessarily have to bring everything with you. Sometimes it's better to be lighter and faster and more mobile than overweighted slow. Uh, because some of those guys in those situations, they can go pretty quick. Yeah. Are you bringing food and snacks with you or anything like that? Yeah, I, it would mostly be like pocket snacks and things like that. I wouldn't necessarily keep it in my pack because I don't want to stop and take the time to rummage through and grab all of my food. I would have it in like cargo pockets and everything else like that. And it wouldn't be full entrees. It would be like trail mix, jerky, uh, what are those little like marathon runner gel packets? Oh yeah, the salt and yep. yeah. I would take a bunch of those, have it inside of my chest rig as well, so that if I feel like my energy levels and my motivation going down, I would take it in and just get a quick little hit, keep pushing, keep going. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm looking at, trying to sustain myself and take care of anything that's there, get them out of there as fast as humanly possible. So the, uh, the idea is as minimal as you can be while still getting the job done. Yep. Well, before someone builds something like this out and decides, hey, I'm just gonna go search and rescue someone. Dude. There's probably a lot more training and yes. having understanding of your terrain and map reading and what is higher up and how can I contact them. There's, uh, this is cool, but obviously there's so much more to it than just- uh, There is, these, these are all just tools, but like the most underrated tool is your brain and training. So like you can do all this sort of stuff or you can like find a lot of the gear, buy all the cool shit. It doesn't mean that you know how to use any of it or that you're actually useful with any of it. So you can do one portion of it. It doesn't mean that you can talk to anybody. It doesn't mean that you can actually help somebody else in that situation. So like before anybody is going like, I'm going to be a SAR expert, uh, one, contact like your local agencies that do it there's a lot of companies out there that are responsible for search and rescue first responders ems uh life flight all those guys do a great job with it um and some other conventions out of like the southern baptist convention they all provide training for like search and rescue efforts to disaster release efforts uh and they do training all over the country those private organizations through like churches they do a lot of this stuff and they prepare people and get you certified to be an asset in those areas and environments. So I, I would recommend getting hold of them, yeah. take some of the classes, learn how to do all this stuff, how to communicate with them, how to deal with uh, finding a good areas and whatnot, practice land nav on your own, get a class on it, you know, all that different sort of stuff, and it will help you further on if that's what you want to do yeah and there's some churches that they have they have teams that do this kind of like you know oh, yeah. professionally it's, it's not their job but they're professionally trained on how to do this and if there is a particular job that needs unskilled labor unskilled hands they have these massive trailers they tell you where to go where to meet up with them and then they outfit you with what you're capable of using yep. and plug you in directly to where you can be the most valuable without being a liability at the same time it's pretty awesome so cool well uh if you guys are curious about some of this stuff something to come back to that mitch pointed out is s these kind of ideas things like how to survive or go find someone or help someone out in the woods or in an urban environment even um it was common knowledge back in the 1800s you know 1700s even for young boys and girls growing up and we've lost a lot of that so if you guys are looking for some information on how to not just buy this equipment and what you need but how to put it into practice Mitch over here does classes with Bear Solutions, some urban survival classes, understanding how to use some of these tools as well. So if you're curious, you can, uh, we'll, we'll pop up the, the website here. You can check out that website and see if there's any classes in your area or go out and take a class with Mitch and some of the other instructors. And also Mil Mitch doesn't self-promote promote enough, but uh, he does do a lot of work with Agonic, uh, which does clothes, survival type stuff just a little bit. So uh, that's another place that you guys can reach them. So Mitch, thanks a lot, man. I hope uh, if I ever get lost uh, with a broken leg and I don't have anything on me, or maybe I have a broken leg because I had too much on me. Um, I hope it's you. <laughs> well, I hope I don't have to be the person because it sucks having to treat your friends, but it's also funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already know how he's going to try and take my temperature. <laughs> <laughs>
Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Show us what you got.